At the T-minus three-minute mark, tape recorders on board the spacecraft were turned on. These recorders record both voice and data. This is WOMMLP operating our Burlington for Mon. We're back. It's 105.9, the radiator, the rocket shop. I'm your host on Proxon. With me right now, Johnny Azer. How's it going, Johnny? I'm doing fantastic. I just put out the best music of my life. No sleep for like a week. And uh, I, I wanted to actually present new music for a change instead of like playing old stuff. Oh, that's fantastic. And uh, as I understand it, you, you literally finished recording one of these songs today. Uh, well, actually, the three first ones you're going to play, basically, uh, uh, I worked on all week, and some were half-finished with the guitar tracks, but I did all the rest. But the first one, that's like a psychedelic disco called uh, Heaven, Heaven Arrived and everything, that one, I play all tracks and everything, but I did the three vocals today. I usually start out with all the music and the creations and everything, mm-hmm. and then I, I do the vocals last okay. and everything. When I do, the vocals, as you can hear, was done around this afternoon, from wow. like 11 o'clock this morning to like 5 o'clock tonight. So this is as fresh as you get. Um, and I do apologize. We got, I was going to say, we, we got a bit of background noise there, so we're just going to uh, wait, wait for that to quiet down. It's just my conscience. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I always like to start with music so everyone kind of got an idea of what's going on. So uh, we're going to play off this first track uh, right away. Uh, do you like to present it? Uh, yes, this one's a, a disco hit and everything, but it's like really psychedelic, like Pink Floyd fans. And uh, basically, I do all the tracks on it. It's all by myself, starting Thursday night and all this. Uh, and I sing the vocals, and it's basically me doing all the tracks, and it's called Heaven Has Arrived. It's like a, a really beautiful love song about a girl I haven't met yet. <laughs> <laughs> all the best love songs are. All right, it was I'll a dream. Let... I had a dream like last week, and I woke up and I, I heard the music, and I did it. Uh, we, well, that's again. Uh, that's some some of the best creativity uh, hits you is uh, four in the morning when you're when you're half asleep. Um, right. Well, uh, we'll get this playing then. Uh, when I can uh, sort out this uh, this iPod in my in my hand, um, just give me a second. If it doesn't play, I'm just going to have to become a Brad Pitt bottle uh, body double. <laughs> All right, we are good. Uh, so heaven has arrived by yep. Johnny Azer.
Johnny Azer there with Heaven Has Arrived, uh, a song that is literally fresh off the press. Uh, it, the vocals done in two takes this afternoon. Yeah, I wrote the words like at 11 o'clock, finished them up, and then I, I sang it like at 1. Made in the witching hour of 4 in the morning uh, when, when, when the inspiration hit you. Uh, we, we were just saying while the song was playing, uh, very Bowie-esque. Was that, an intentional, uh, was that an intentional homage to the man? Uh, no, but a lot of people told me I did like sound like David Bowie, and in fact, you know, I, I actually covered Moon Age Daydream on YouTube. Yeah, yeah? Yeah. I, I love David Bowie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean... Like, his early early Bowie, like, I remember, like, the 1972 Ziggy Stardust, I mm-hmm. had... Oh, I love that album. I was literally listening to that while I cooked this after, this evening. I um, So, um, from from what I've heard, you're, you're very much into, you know, the classic... Uh, rockers, you know, your Pink Floyds, your U2s, your David Bowie. Well, who was my favorite band? In fact, when I was like 12 years old back in 1971, before then I wanted to be an astronaut, and I heard like Baba O'Reilly on the radio when like the Who came out, Who's Next in uh, July of 1971, and I was like, who is this? Who is this? And somebody told me it was like Cat Stevens, and at the time I lived in Long Island, so I was like obsessed, like looking for Cat Stevens. Then a year later, this is WPLJ, and that was the Who from last year, doing from their classic Who, last year's album, Who's Next, and Baba O'Reilly. And then 50 copies later, Who's Next? So Who's Next was like the U2 Joshua Tree and Who's Next are my biggest influence. And then Jethro Tall Stand Up. Oh, wow. So and is that, is, has that been the case uh, across your entire musical uh, career so far? Because you, you've been going for quite a while now. Uh, you've, been, you've been creating music since the early 2000s or am I? Uh, well, I started writing music back in like 1987 and stuff like that. And uh, basically, uh, yeah, that's what I've been doing. But I've been playing in bands since I was 16 in upstate New York, Utica, Syracuse and all that. But uh, basically, I wanted to get my own backup band because I was like drummers in other bands and it was their band. You know, I follow the rules. I do as they want. But I always wanted my my own sound and my own band because I mean you know I can create all this music at my studio but I don't have a live backup band mm-hmm. and, and you were saying you actually you in that last track that you uh, you performed all the all the different parts to it so we're talking about drums uh, keyboard guitar yes every all the vocals. music here is me and everything and then uh, then I did the vocals today which is like the next three songs the next two others I did the vocals today all right, and and is this going towards uh, and ultimately to to create an album, or are you just making EPs at the moment, or is it kind of just an as well, and when you? Well, you actually, it's going to be a CD in the works and stuff like that and everything. I just got to rest up tonight, and then you know I'm just going to be like, hopefully, I'm going to have like a whole full CD of new songs uh, within uh, by May. Oh wow! Okay, so uh, so we're talking like a full full ten, twelve tracks. Uh, yes, and it's going to be entitled Johnny Azer and the Food Stamp Frank Sinatra's. The sorry, say it again. Uh, it's going to be entitled Johnny Azer and the Food Stamp Frank Sinatra's. The Food Stamp Frank Sinatra's. Yeah. Um, and what inspired that title? Well, because I'm like really poor and everything like that. So, you know, basically, you know, somebody, this like yuppie person said, oh, you're a loser. You get food stamps. And I said, yeah, but I got a brain tumor. But uh, anyway, I didn't really let it bother me. So instead of being insulted, I was like, well, roll with it. Yeah. And everything. So, you know, like I'm a singer, like, you know, it's like a mock on myself, like the food stamp Frank Sinatra. Oh, you yeah. Know what I mean? I feel like, you. I'm making fun of myself. That's uh, the, b- the best way to be, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, but that's fantastic. It would good for you for embracing it. Um, so you've been, as you said, you've been making music since you were 16 um, with, with, with these certain core influences. But how has that progressed over the years? And, and as, as, uh, as technology has advanced, how has that changed your approach to making music? Well, one thing I know about technology is I remember back in 1995 when I was paying 100 bucks an hour recording in studios and stuff, and, you know, they watched the clock. They told me how to play my songs. Well, the things that I fantasize about owning in 1995, the technology didn't exist or was it too expensive. So, like, if I was back in my apartment in Rutland in 1995 and I saw what I had in my apartment now, I'd be like, oh, you don't have to be rich and famous to get this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so you're saying that the, the, the ability to create the music that you want to make that wasn't available 20 years ago is now and now something that, you, you know, I wouldn't say anyone can get hold of, but, you know, near enough, anyone can create a studio in their own, in their own bedroom. Yeah, and you can take your time, artistic purity. Yeah, and, uh, and does that go for distribution as well? Uh, I mean, you say you're making CDs, but you've been putting stuff on on musical streaming websites, Spotify, SoundCloud. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I did have stuff on like CD Baby and stuff like that, and uh, I can see on Google they have my stuff all over and everything like that. But I think so far the royalties is enough for me to get a happy meal at McDonald's. 
<laughs> well, enjoy that happy meal. Um, I'm going to stick on the next track um, as I fiddle with the... Uh, and, uh, yes, the next one is called Empty Times, but this is not all myself. It's the sensational Jason Hannafelt who plays the wild guitar with the sensational Adam Wright who does the Will Killer guitar tracks. I do all the rest. But on this case, Jay actually played the computer drum and everything, the electric guitar, and he did the bass. So I took those three things and everything and I all the other tracks like synthesizers, rhythms, I actually played like real drums. So when you hear the real drums playing along, that's me with the uh, wood knocker, tambourine, and then the synthesizers and all that, and then the singing vocals. So the, the initial bass and then the computer drum uh, and then the guitar and the leads are Jay, and then the rest is me. And this song's called Empty Times about, well, things aren't looking too pretty. The apocalypse could be around the corner, but I, I want to believe in a happy world. It's not such a case. <laughs> I think it's a, a very suitable song for these times. I just hope Megan Fox makes love to me before I, the, the world explodes. Well, <laughs> you, you, might, you might be in a long queue on that one. All right. Okay. Empty Times. I'll wash your dishes. <laughs> by Johnny Azer. Johnny, 
Johnny Azer. Johnny Azer there with Empty Times. Uh, so, Johnny, you were mentioning um, during that, um, during uh, the, w when the track was playing, that this track is more you. Why is it more you? Why do you feel this track's more, more embodying your own personality? Well, uh, the first one uh, basically was going to try to see if I can do a top 40 hit for the masses, but it's the real, the sound of the music lush is like the real me. But the second one is more like I'm a power rocker and everything like that, you know, like Led Zeppelin, The Who, and then you know, like Black Sabbath and everything was a big, like, the, you know, that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. you know what I'm trying to say? So uh, basically... Uh, uh, the, it's more of like I'm. Uh, I'm. I do top forty just so I can get the in the door, hopefully, mm -hmm. and everything, and then educate the masses to like the second song and the third. You know. What I, I mean? see. I see. So you, you you're giving a little bit of sweet, and then you're gonna bring you bring all the sour afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> the bit of medicine that we all yeah. need to actually hear. Um, and uh, there was a fantastic uh, guitar solo uh, on that track, and you said that that was a good friend of yours. Oh, uh, yes, the sensational Jason Hannafelt and everything. He, uh, he used to live around here. Jay and I were in a band called Hidden Drives, a sleeper cell. We played at higher ground and everything. And I really miss him and Adam and everything. And they're like my best pals and everything. And I'm hoping to see him again real soon. Like once in a while, Jay lives in New Jersey, but without even notice sometimes, he'll like knock on my door and not even say who it is. He's like he's like a surprise person. You know, I, I miss him and everything. I really do. And Jay, if you're listening, I doubt you are, but I love you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's a wonderful thing, a way to surprise someone, you know, to stay. Uh, just turning up to that door uh, uh, randomly. Um, well, that's fantastic, though. And uh, do you uh, do you take um, artists from around your local area, and do you do you collaborate and work with them, or do you primarily work solo? Well, uh, I would collaborate with anybody who wants. In fact, my attitude was like, you know, if there was a really wailing guitar player that had like the Dave Navarro, Ru Alex Lice, and Rush sound, I mean, I. Excuse me, I would do like drum tracks and then trade for guitar tracks and stuff because, you know, uh, that's my problem is if I could just find a really good guitar, well and guitar player that could do like Zeppelin and ACDs and all, you know, like that kind of sound, power rock and everything, uh, I could do all the rest of the tracks. Yeah. And then, you know, if I could find like somebody, I'd do free drum tracks and extra for exchange for guitar tracks and stuff and then free recording time and everything is stay for guitar tracks. You know what I mean? Well, there we go. I mean, if, uh, if anyone's listening who's a guitarist, then... It can be a, an exchange of creativity <laughs> or creative works. Uh, we'd love to get that set up. Um, but you did say that you are you're learning guitar at the moment. Of all the other all the other instruments you you know, guitar guitar's not yeah, one. It's of the them. same as like chords. It's like all inverted and everything like that. Granted, I know how to play the piano where the chords are all on the piano. And the same thing is about guitar. It's just a matter of there's a lot more you have to deal with. But you know, like there's a, the same chord could be down here, down here. What I've been figuring out on my own and stuff. But I know how to play like inverted, like U two type chords. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I did read somewhere that UC has been quite an influence on you as well. Oh, yeah. And in fact, uh, about the time uh, in March of 1987, the Joshua Tree came out and it was really spiritual and everything. And I remember the first song I heard was like Running to Stand Still off a rock station. And like March 15th, 1987, I still remember that day when they were real premiering the Joshua Tree. Uh, and anyway, so about that time and everything, I learned how to write songs. And like With or Without You was just starting to get airplay, like, you know, like a hit on the radio, like uh, say around July of 1980, or around June of 1987 and stuff where the streets have no name. So, like, when my first original, So Many Tears, everybody goes, wow, that sounds like With or Without You. I mean, you know, big influence on that song. Mm, and and the, the two songs that we played so far are very much kind of stadium-style songs. Uh, is it difficult to replicate that uh, in a home studio, or is it more about the spirit that you're bringing to the song? Oh, well, uh, if you have a lot of reverb and delay, you can get a stadium sound in a home studio. <laughs> well, there we go. Um, and do you ever do you ever go the opposite way? Do you ever like bring it down to like an acoustic set? Do you ever have like a any kind of lower, low, more low key songs, more folky songs? Oh, I want to start your cross well, genre. Well, uh, I don't know how to really play the guitar. I mean, I want to do all styles, but I don't really know how to play the guitar. I would like to do folk and all that, but I just don't know how to play the guitar. Okay, so uh, so it's, it's more more of a limitation of uh, yeah. of of your your instrumental skills, um, but rather than rather than uh, a preference to certain genres, because you do you do switch genres quite a lot. I mean, as you said, there was more of a psychedelic heavy rock on on the uh, second track that you listened to. First one was more of a kind of a pop rock Bowie style. Um, 
do you have a specific genre that you go for or is it really anything that kind of pops into your head or whatever's influenced well, you Well, my recently? favorite type of genre is like really like ethereal, like, you know, like power rock, you know, like, the, you know, like Rush meets Yes, you know, like meets old Genesis, Peter Gabriel and everything like that. Like when I listen to like Genesis, like Selling England by the Pound and all the, like the Genesis, like Wind and Wuthering and I'm like... I could never be, these guys are beyond geniuses. Like, you know, remember the band Genesis with Peter Gabriel? I do, I yes. mean, the chord progressions and everything and the stuff they come up with, wow. I mean, I'm nothing, I'll never be, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, that's why they are rock gods and fairness. I know. <laughs> Um, so, Johnny, we, we, we are unfortunately running out of time. Um, uh, tell us a little bit about what you've got coming up in the next few weeks, months. Is there any way we can catch you uh, live anywhere? Are you playing live anywhere? Well, uh, actually, I'm so excited about this new music and everything that I was thinking about, like, next week at Manhattan Pizza, bringing my electric drum set down, and then would like the music without the vocals, like, play my electric drum set and stuff like that, and then sing with the background music live. All right, fantastic. In fact, I got this new gimmick where I bought this big giant Bluetooth jukebox. And I don't know if I get in trouble, but I hope it would make me famous. <laughs> if I bungee cord like this big giant blinking Bluetooth jukebox and everything and had it on my back like a bungee cord and then had like a small MP3 player with just music with no vox, I could actually walk around town with a blinking jukebox and everything and <laughs> sing along with it. Well, you never know. It could be, you could be your foot in the door on that one. Um, sh- so uh, Manhattan's next Friday. Uh, well, it's going to be Wednesday next night. Wednesday. Yes, uh, not tonight because I'm too tired, lack of sleep. And but uh, next week and everything, I'm definitely going to be doing open mic at Manhattan Pizza because uh, Andy Lugo is great and you know he's really cool. And uh, basically, I when I did it on November 23rd and everything, I'll never forget that day. I was sick as a dog, blah blah, but it was the best I ever sang in my life. Miracle, miracle, and it was like a really good night and everything. And uh, the last time I was there at Manhattan Pizza, I don't, I was in my own little world, like the spotlights. So I don't know if the crowd was paying attention, but it was a lot of fun. I love I love performing out. You know, there's you really playing out live is a million times better than being home. Like, you know what I mean? Oh, absolutely, and uh, it's that's really where the magic of music really happens. Um, Johnny, thank you so much for coming in. Of um, would you uh, Would you like to introduce your last track for us? Uh, yes, this sound is like the real me, me. The way I hear music in my head, like you know, like Jethro Tull, Genesis, that kind of sounding. <laughs> You know, like 1971, Jethro Tull meets like uh, Pink Floyd and all. This song's called like The Passion Still Flows. And uh, my friend Adam Wright, who is sensational, uh, plays the guitar tracks you hear. Uh, a lot of them, but the real high-end U2 and jangly, that's me. But the leads are all Adam and the power chords. And then all the other wall of sound music is like 62 tracks total. It's all me and then singing live today. Well, it's called t- Passion Still Flows. Well, this is the real me. This is this is the way I want the, the actual world to real see you. The, re- the, the real, this, real, real. The, the distilled version of yeah. Johnny Azer. Like this is the closest you'll hear the way I hear music in my head when I walk downtown and stuff. This is it. If you were inside my head, it would sound like this. Well, Johnny, thank you once again for so much coming on. Um, guys, tune in next week. We've got another Rocket Shop live at Arts Riot. Uh, Francesca Blanchett and Cricket Blue will be playing. I'll be on stage. Please come on down. It's going to be a fantastic night, and you get to see me um, uh, on stage as well. Um, but playing us out this evening, we got Johnny Azer with the uh, passion mix. Uh, passion still flows. Passion, thank you. Yeah.